The next iteration of Ethereum, is that referred to as Ethereum 2.0 or 3.0? Some people are calling it Ethereum 2. And of course, this is what Ethereum has been promising to do for like the last five or six years. So when is Ethereum 2.0 coming? Well, if you ask me five or six years ago, they would have said this summer. And then a year after that, they would have said this summer. And then last year, they would have said this summer. And this year, they're saying this summer. So who knows? The trick is these blockchains are driven by network validators. Right. And right now they use what we call mining or proof of work as a way of validating the network. Validating the network means that if you're going to have a distributed ledger, you need everybody to agree on what that common source of truth is. And that means there has to be agreement as to what's in the chain at a given point in time. And this idea called proof of work is a wonderfully simple idea, first forward by Satoshi Nakamoto for the Bitcoin network, for just deciding what that common truth is by having everybody enter a race to basically do a math problem. And then whoever wins that race by solving that math problem first, they get the right to take the next set of transactions and put them into the book, right, the block, and then add on that block. And everybody else follows the rules of the chain that is most likely to be the valid one is the one that's longest, right? So whoever won the race and puts that block on, on at the end, and then everyone else can validate that, that block is cryptographically correct. That was based on something that would actually match the criteria of the magic math problem. And since it's the longest, that's one folks use, and that becomes the, the cycle you have for the network validation. And it's all incentivized that people want to win because the uh, each new block comes with a couple new coins and that's the way you get paid you get paid in the native currency that is then being distributed with every single one of these blocks in ethereum unlike bitcoin where that number of coins is shrinking 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 uh, in ethereum it's not shrinking and is is more accessible and that's what everyone's incentivized to do real quick unlike ethereum there's no gas limit on expressing your gratitude so go ahead and click that like button Thank you. Now, the idea of Ethereum 2 is that they want to move to what's called a proof of stake model. And that means that instead of someone, you know, buying a whole lot of computing horsepower, hash power as it's called, uh, in order to do the magic math problem, you, you just need to stake a lot of currency and say, uh, I'm going to be one of the network validators. And basically, if your version of the network, you know, isn't accepted, well, then all of a sudden, all that money you staked isn't worth anything. And that's how you create common incentives. And that's how other proof of stake systems work, like Polygon and, and, and some of these others. The trick is, the people who make their money with mining are set up to not have a whole lot of native currency. They're set up to have a whole lot of computing horsepower. And all of a sudden you're telling them commuting horsepower isn't going to be valuable and they need to have this other thing they don't have. In fact, a lot of the miners are really light on native currency and they're light on it because they need to spend money on fiat in order to buy all this horsepower to be able to do the mining. So the, the incentives of like who would be a validator versus who would be a miner are significantly different to such an extent that trying to convince the miners they should now join this new world order is rough and you now need to go get someone completely different in order to do the, the other kind of validation. And of course, you know, Ethereum is under constant attack, which means that the proof of stake model now really needs to be very secure in order for it to work. And every time they find a bug in it, they say, oh, well, now we need to go, you know, step back and think about this again. And another year passes. So that combination of the people who are currently doing the mining don't want the staking. The people who want the staking aren't necessarily aligned with the miners and the technology really has to work. It's just a bunch of hard things you need to do to make it all shift, which is one of the reasons why other systems that were designed with proof of stake from the beginning have a much easier time of it, right? Like Polygon or AVAX or, or Solana with a sort of variation on proof of stake. They are able to just sort of live in that world of proof of stake because they never had proof of work. They never had the mining. But at the same time, it's not clear that they actually solve the problems that Ethereum is trying to work through right now because they're so small that the incentives weren't really there to hack that system from mining out their uh, their native token. Instead, the easy money to be made, as we all know, is really on the bridges and uh, stealing money from people who are trying to bridge a coin from, say, one network like Solana to another like Ethereum. And that's, that's the weak point that more people have focused on is the smart contracts in there as opposed to trying to hack the whole of the network. As always, if you want to stay apprised of the latest around emerging tech, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thanks.